Hot springs, two words with centuries of meaning. These are the springs, and yes, they are hot. 143 degrees hot and 4,000 years in the making, but we'll get into that later. This region was actually the first federally protected area in 1832, 40 years prior to Yellowstone. So let's begin our exploration in what's been referred to as the Valley of Vapors and the American Spa, Hot Springs National Park. Before Hot Springs, the city, that is, of Hot Springs existed, this entire area was vastly different. If you can just imagine 47 or so open hot springs and all the steam emitting from them, it's no wonder why this unique valley was called the Valley of Vapors. If there ever was a fountain of youth, this had to be it. It's also no wonder why the federal government in 1832 took an unprecedented step setting aside this area as the first U.S. reservation created solely to protect a natural resource. The oldest archaeological evidence considered reliable by researchers as far as American Indians using the hot springs dates back to 1771. But Native Americans did occupy the land included within the park boundaries all the way back to 3,000 years ago. They quarried novaculite here as raw material for stone tools. Water is still the main attraction of why visitors come to Hot Springs National Park. And be as it may, there is still the belief with some that the traces of minerals and an average temperature of 143 degrees give these waters whatever therapeutic properties they may have. But the Hot Springs did not become hot overnight. Joe, so you know, it's hard to imagine uh, for us that uh, this, this water is, what, 4,000 years old? That's about right, Chuck. Um, basically, what the scientists tell us is that it takes about 4,000 years, give or take a couple of centuries, for the water to come down as rain, percolate into the earth, go to a depth of about 10 miles, and then slowly but surely come up through the cracks on the, in, the, in the earth. As it comes up, it heats up. And so by the time that it gets to surface in the general area of Bathhouse Row, behind Bathhouse Row, we get 47 hot springs, water that is on average 143 degrees Fahrenheit, and good for bathing and drinking. Bathhouse Row did not always look like it does today. In fact, there have been about four generations of bathhouses. The first were crude wooden shack-like structures which frequently burned or rotted due to the continued exposure to water and steam. By 1921, when the Hot Springs Reservation finally became the 18th National Park, monumental bathhouses were built to cater to the crowds of hell seekers who flocked to the American spa at more than a million a year. These new establishments spared no expense to make sure bathers would be pampered amidst artful surroundings. It was indeed the golden age of bathing. As modern medicine began curing what the hot springs could not, the bathing business started declining during the 1950s. The bathhouses eventually closed their doors and fell into disrepair. During the 1980s, local citizens and the National Park Service began searching for ways to bring back the bathhouses to their original splendor and purpose. Finally, in 2004, the park received the first of several appropriations to rehabilitate the vacant bathhouses and make them leasable. 
Today, they are available for lease under the Historic Property Leasing Program. Superintendent Josie Fernandez refers to it as the renaissance of Bathhouse Row. I like to call it that way because for many, many years after World War II, the bathing industry started to go into decline, if you will. People could stay home, pop a pill for medicine, and get an x-ray or such, and, and people stopped coming uh, in the numbers that they used to come to Hot Springs. However, uh, now people know that uh, cleanliness and good eating habits and exercising is good for you. And we're very fortunate that these beautiful buildings are beginning to be restored and reoccupied by businesses that believe in that philosophy. So for example, last summer, the Guapa Bathhouse was reopened and Guapa Baths and Spa is now offering modern day spa activities in a historic setting but with a modern flavor. And people can once again take a bath and enjoy themselves. Of course, we also have the Buckstaff Bathhouse, and that still offers the visitors the traditional bathing experience that people used to enjoy. After you revitalize yourself with a bath or maybe a massage, you may want to try out a portion of the 26 miles of hiking trails that are within the park. There are of, of different degrees of difficulty, and some of the trails themselves were uh, designed by a medical doctor from Germany, I believe it was Germany, uh, Dr. Ortel, uh, who designed the trails to be um, easily accessible for the infirm that used to come to Hot Springs to take the baths. Um, a lot of people don't realize that uh, at the beginnings of, of the Hot Springs Reservation and Hot Springs National Park, the baths were prescribed by medical doctors. So if you came with a liver ailment or some such thing, you, are, you would be likely to be prescribed said number of baths and a numbered or a colored trail. And so that's what people used to believe, that taking the baths and doing exercise here could potentially cure you of whatever ailed you. So, but the trails are still available and we encourage people to, to enjoy them because they're there for them. And, uh, and walking is good exercise for everyone. Such as along the Grand Promenade here. Such as the long, uh, along the Grand Promenade and in front of Bathhouse Row. In fact, it is uh, generally during lunchtime you see a lot of the locals walking one side and making the loop and closing it in the other way and then going back to work. The trail that we took this particular day is one of my favorites, the Goat Rock Trail, which starts out from the Overlook on North Mountain. Backtrack down the road a bit to where the trailhead sign is located. From there, it's an easy hike which will take you down below the overlook. The trail will first open up into flowery glades, offering some great wildflower photo opportunities. Following a couple of switchbacks, the trail does become a little uneven and rocky. After about several hundred feet, you'll pass beneath huge novaculite boulders. Here, Goat Rock itself will be 40 feet above you. A trail sign indicates a rock stairway which will take you to the overlook atop Goat Rock. The sights here offer spectacular views of Indian Mountain and you probably will want to spend some time to take it all in. Before leaving the park, be sure to stop by the ranger station at Gulf of Gorge Campground and check out Helen Stannard's painting of Goat Rock Overlook. So test out the waters for yourself and everything else that's here at Hot Springs National Park. And for more on this destination and many of our others, and to view our maps or to order a copy of an episode, visit our website, aetn.org slash exploringarkansas. 
And we'll see you again the next time for another exciting adventure on Exploring Arkansas.